other because it's Easter time. O Queen of Heaven, be joyful. Hallelujah. For he who was born of your body, hallelujah, has risen as he promised. Hallelujah. Pray for us to the Father. Hallelujah. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Hallelujah. For the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, gave gladness to the world, grant, we pray, that we, aided by the prayers of the Virgin Mary, his mother, may attain to the joys of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, welcome to this Easter Eucharist. Uh, as we offer the Eucharist, we do so with special intention of gratitude uh, for this heavenly feast that our Lord Jesus gave to us on the night in which he was betrayed uh, and which he uh, co consecrated by his presence on the first Easter day. Because it's in the Easter week, we say the glory to God on page 356. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, our Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you have taken away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy Ones. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Excuse me, Thomas. Would you tell us what you mean? This is the Psalm 105, 1 through 8. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praise to him, and speak all of our works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continue to seek his face. I'm sorry. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Christ. Now, on that same day, the first Easter day, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other when you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Clopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening. And the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Would you t- take the Bibles and open up to uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. One uh, teacher apparently told his class, next week we'll be studying part of Luke. I want you, uh, and our topic will be honesty. I want you all to read chapter 25 of the Gospel according to St. Luke in preparation. Asked in the class how many had done so, they raised their hands. He said there are 24 chapters. So chapter 24 is the last one in Luke. And we're looking at verses 13 to 35. Along with the, uh, the proclamation of the resurrection that we have in today's readings, I want us uh, to focus on the way that they give us spiritual guidance, spiritual direction. And the first piece is in that bit about um, as uh, Peter and John are going to the temple at the third hour for prayer. So from the earliest days of the church, the pattern of Christians gathering together for prayer at fixed times is solidly rooted. So when we say morning and evening prayer in the church, when monasteries say the sevenfold office throughout the day, when we gather in small communities of Christians to pray, we're living into the earliest uh, foundational pattern of Christian prayer, which we've sometimes lost sight of. And so part of the direction we may be getting here is, you know, are there ways that I can gather, not just weekly, but daily in prayer? And of course, the the weekday masses help us with that. When the two disciples were going to Emmaus, they were talking with one another about the devastation of the crucifixion and the confusion of the first rumors of the resurrection. And Jesus came near, but they couldn't recognize him. And we might be conscious of the reality that Jesus does not always reveal himself to us immediately and obviously when he comes to us. He may come to us as uh, someone in need, in the form of a fellow Christian, uh, in countless ways. And part of it is that if we are attentive to every blessing that God brings into our lives, we will be attentive to Jesus, whether our eyes are immediately opened or not. When Jesus, secondly, when Jesus asks them what they're talking about, uh, they, they don't look at one another and say, oh, we were talking about Christian stuff. We better change the subject to football. Right? <laughs> they told Jesus what they were talking about, and they gave the best account that they could of what they knew about the life and ministry, and even with hence the resurrection of Jesus. An example to us to be ready to say, you know, what are you thinking about? What were you talking about? Well, if what I was thinking about or talking about was some blessing from God, some element of the gospel, it's an, it's an opportunity for me to share it. The, the next step, though, is uh, we may well share with Jesus what we think reality is, and he may well say to us how foolish you are and how slow to believe. That what we understand to be the case is likely to be a limited understanding. That's true of things of, of faith uh, and things uh, throughout our lives in the world. And to allow Jesus to open up for us our understanding is a crucial part of ordinary Christian living. For these two uh, two disciples, Jesus opens up the, the law and the prophets, showing how they point to him and how he fulfills these scriptures. So it, it teaches us that when we read scripture, in particular the Old Testament, but when we read scripture, We depend on Jesus opening our understanding if we are to see what the true meaning of God's purpose is through this passage or through Scripture as a whole. We do that uh, by not being solitary, only solitary, in our study and in our conclusions. That we test what we're reading in conversation with fellow Christians. Of course, we're part of the body of Christ the Church. The way that Jesus opens our eyes and our understanding of Scripture is in the teaching, the proclamation of the church to which we attend. Fellow Christians have written with insight and wisdom about Holy Scripture, and they can help us to understand what we're reading. 
and to read it with the eyes of Christ and the Church. When uh, the day is over and the disciples are at their destination, Jesus uh, makes us to go on uh, with his journey. And it's only when they invite him that he comes and spends time with them and dines with them. A reminder to us in our lives to be inviting Jesus to enter into, to keep us company in all that we do. It was when he took the bread and broke it that their eyes were opened and they recognized the presence of the Lord. One of the great blessings for us in Catholic Christianity is we know that when we celebrate the Eucharist, Christ is immediately with us and that we receive uh, from him his living body and blood. Remember that Jesus uh, says that we are to do this until he comes again. And of course, there's a reality of the final coming in judgment and salvation. And yet, Christ comes again in his resurrection, doesn't he? And he comes again in every celebration of the Eucharist. So in the Eucharist, we may well be saying, Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come. He disappeared, and sometimes Jesus seems to slip away when we most want him to stay around. And maybe he arrives when we most want him to stay away. So uh, he's, he's the Lord, we work for him. Uh, they immediately go back to share what's happened with their fellow disciples. And it's, uh, it may remind us to, to speak of our faith and of our experience of God with one another. Uh, we, we know the call to share our faith with others. We may be better able to do that when we're accustomed to share what's going on in our Christian lives with those who understand what it means to follow Christ. So as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, as we encounter him in broken bread and wine outpoured, may we delight to celebrate the resurrection of Christ and to share that good news with one another and with the world around us. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. That by his power, wars, pestilence, and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may have mercy on the faithful departed, giving them a share in his victory. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may send his fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us kneel and confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, may the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, Blessed forever. God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, 
and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all that share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose again for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty God, the Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.